Hello, I'm Jim Garland, WHZR, and I'd like to describe this shortwave receiver sitting next to me on my workbench. This is a Helicrafters SX-73, which is also uh, known by its military designation of R-274 slash FRR. Relatively few of these were manufactured over a two-year span between 1952 and 1954. Uh, this particular radio is serial number 619, and I feel very fortunate to have acquired it because it's in excellent, excellent electrical and mechanical condition. In fact, the only cosmetic flaws on the radio are paint chips around the rack mount screw holes on the front panel. This radio sold new for $975, which makes it one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive, receiver that Helicrafters manufactured. Some of the features of the SX-73 it tunes 540 kilohertz to 54 megahertz in six band segments. It receives AM and CW with a built-in BFO, and there's, in fact, a BFO injection level control on the rear panel, which is an unusual feature. It has six selectivity positions, a built-in crystal filter, and can be tuned either by its internal VFO or by external crystals. And inside the radio, there are six sockets for external user-supplied crystals. It's a very stable radio. In fact, it's uh, so stable, almost from a, from a uh, cold turn-on, that it makes for very good single sideband or CW reception. Right now, it's listening to some CW signals on the 18 megahertz band. Some technical features of the radio. It's 19 tubes. It's double conversion above 7 megahertz with a 6 megahertz and a 450 kilohertz IF, and then it's single conversion, of course, below 7 megahertz. It has a 600 ohm audio output strip on the rear panel for a speaker, uh, and this particular radio also has a second uh, audio transformer under the chassis, so it can be used as well with an 8 or a 4 ohm speaker. It weighs 58 pounds, it's rack mount only, and uh, its band switching is done through a unique turret assembly, which resembles that used on a few other high-end military and government radios of the 1950s, an example being the Hammerlin Pro 310 or the SB600JX receiver. So now let's take a look at the SX-73 in actual operation. Here's the SX-73 tuned to a special event station on the 20 meter band. And I want you to turn your attention to the dial mechanism. Uh, first notice the dial lock, which is a, that ugly uh, metal contraption to the left of the main tuning dial. Helicrafters was actually very, very proud of that because when you tighten that knob, it locks the dial with, with no shift at all in the tuned frequency. And that's very important, particularly on the high frequency bands where the band spread is, gets progressively smaller. Now we'll uh, zoom in on the... Um, on the uh, dial readout. Notice the, uh, the, the black uh, label that shows that the receiver is tuned to band 5, 14.0 to 29.7 uh, megahertz, or megacycles as it says. And below that uh, black readout uh, is a, a, f a dial that's ganged directly to the knob and turns 360 degrees with the knob. The window above the, the black indicator shows uh, the particular band in use, and it's, it's uh, gear reduced. So now I'm going to tune across the band and see how it works. So you can see that they're, the, two, the two dials are turning at a very different, at a very different rate. Now I'm up above the 20 meter band, so I'm going to go back down into the band here. Here's another special event station. The uh, band seems full of them today. The uh, AGC in the uh, SX-73 works on CW, by the way, although I've noticed that it will overload on very strong sideband and CW signals with the RF gain all the way open. Still, it's better than not having any AGC at all. Here's the SX-73 on the most selective uh, position, which uh, this is the selectivity switch. As I said before, it has six positions. And we're listening to the CW station on the 20 meter band in the most uh, selective position. I'll tune across it here.
So it's actually rather selective, makes a, uh, and, it, and you can adjust the phasing control, which is right here, for single signal uh, reception. Now I'm going to broaden out the selectivity. The gain changes a little bit as you widen it out, you can, but you can hear the difference. I've taken the uh, top uh, lid off the receiver so we can take a look inside. And as you can see, it has typical mil-spec type construction from the 1950s. All the IF transformers and chassis are fungus-proofed. Uh, there are retaining clips on the uh, larger tubes. For example, this is one of the power rectifier tubes. Here's your 6V6 audio output stage. There's a VR tube for voltage regulation. There's an amperite uh, current uh, regulating tube. These two Christmas tree lights are uh, to limit the surge uh, current at uh, startup. Over on the right side of the chassis, you can see this large cast aluminum uh, sub-chassis, which holds the, uh, the RF amplifier uh, tuned circuit stages. And uh, below that is this turret assembly, which we'll take a look at in just a minute. And here you can see part of the, the gear reduce mechanism, which is responsible for the two-speed tuning uh, dial. Here's the underside of the SX-73, and as you can see, it's very clean wiring. I just love the, the neat wiring on these military uh, radios. Certainly, uh, Helicopters never wired anything like this on their consumer-grade radios, even the SX-88. Uh, the most interesting part of the uh, under-chassis wiring is this turret assembly here, and each of these is a tuned circuit for an individual band. You can undo these two screws here, and this just lifts right out for servicing uh, if, if necessary. And then when you turn the band switch, it rotates the turret, and there's spring-loaded fingers that make contact along these little four studs here on each tuned circuit, and that's how, that's how you change band on the radios. It works very well. It's probably expensive to make, but of course, uh, when Uncle Sam is paying the bill, price is no object. Here's the rear panel of the SX-73. Notice that these various panels remove with quick disconnect fasteners. You just rotate these a uh, half a turn and then the panel uh, pops right off. It's a nice convenience feature. I wish was on more radios of this era. Uh, here's your uh, antenna coax input right here. And then you can also connect an antenna if you want up through these screw terminals on the side. This uh, coax jack here is a 455 kilohertz IF output which is very nice if you want to use the SX-73 with a uh, single sideband converter. Underneath this little panel is a terminal strip that's for external muting of the receiver. Uh, this uh, is an adjustment pod. It says meter zero, but it doesn't really mean that. In fact, it's more of a meter sensitivity adjustment. Uh, you're supposed to set that so that a 50 microvolt signal gives zero dB on the S-meter. You have an audio input a terminal strip here uh, which couples directly into the uh, uh, audio stage of the uh, receiver. I don't know why anyone would want to do that. There are your speaker terminals, and there you put your 600 ohm uh, speakers here. But this, as I said before, has an internal audio transformer, so you can connect a, uh, a, 12, a 4 or 8 ohm speaker between these two terminals. There's your AC power input socket. There's an auxiliary AC out for peripheral equipment. A 2 amp fuse goes in here, and then there's a spare fuse there. Uh, very clean, uh, very simple, and straightforward to use. 